come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, quarantine edition. As uh, we're coming to you live from separate points on the globe, uh, from lots doing- of deep dark basements. <laughs> yes, many. I'm actually in a basement right now. So, well, you've always been in a basement. I mean, true, but I'm elsewhere in a basement. <laughs> in another basement. I'm not in your basement. <laughs> in a uh, basement far, far away. <laughs> yes. Well, if this is your first time joining us, we're a movie review podcast. Every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the group. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And, uh, well, actually, before we get going, uh, tonight, who are you? you? Oh, sorry, I'm Colin. Damn it. I keep forgetting every week. Who am I? Yeah. It's like two weeks in a row. I know. Uh, well, before we do get going tonight, I just wanted to, uh, I know we're probably a week behind everybody else who's listening. Um, this week we lost, uh, Stuart Gordon, uh, the director of, uh, Reanimator from Beyond. He was only 72, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I know it's a shame. I don't think we know what he died of, but I mean, it's uh, always yeah. tragic when one of the horror heroes kind of uh, shuffles off this mortal coil. What's your favorite yeah. Stuart Gordon movie? Name them all and I'll tell you. Probably From Beyond. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of reanimators, as everybody else. I'm not uh, either. Yeah. I mean, I like reanimator. Did Stuart Gordon do uh, Castle Freak? He didn't do Castle Freak, right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, and we know I didn't like Castle Freak. Yeah, he did what Dolls. Else did he do? I'm dolls, uh, right? He did, I mean, in his later days, it was like King of the Ants and Stuck and uh, Edmund and stuff like that. But, I mean, he's primarily known for his H.P. Lovecraft stuff. He did Dagon, uh, right. you know, yeah. So, uh, I'll say Reanimator, just because of that fucking cat coming Yeah, back I think it's life. Reanimator it's the best for thing me. In the world. Yeah. Um, well. Well, anyway, tonight uh, we watched a film uh, that was chosen by Colin. Uh, Colin, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Tourist Trap from the Directed year. By, oh shit! Directed by David Schmoller. I, I would. I will ask the question, David okay. Schmoller. <laughs> <laughs> David Schmoller. I'll be asking the question. Schmoller. I hardly knew her. I made a joke last night, right? <laughs> Maybe. I, I, I was in a state watching this movie. Sorry, so like, was oh. I. Um, uh, from the year. Uh, 1979. 1979, okay. Yeah. Schmoller is also uh, the guy did? that will probably, uh, anybody who's familiar with, he did uh, Puppet Master uh, yes. with uh, Charles Band. Yeah. Okay. Charles Band, that was my first reaction to this movie. Oh, what? Charles Band? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but who, who, uh, who else produced this movie, Colin? Uh, Erwin Yablons. Erwin uh, Yablons. Yeah, how would we know, we know his name? I mean, we know from Halloween. Well, there you go. That's pretty much it. He was the head of Compass yeah. International Pictures. He distributed Halloween. I believe he was the guy. Didn't Wasn't he the guy who... Um, Asked uh, John Carpenter, like he came up with the baby with babysitters get terrorized yes, <laughs> by a killer I think so. idea. Yeah. So Charles Band, he uh, let's see here, because he was the executive producer on this. Yes, correct. And this was back in the Empire Pictures days, or even before that, I guess. I don't know because it doesn't say. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, the Blu-ray here, the Full Moon Remastered oh. Edition, which for Please some strange reason emits five minutes arbitrarily from the movie tourist trap uh You're sean ended enough. up yeah because this is the 85 minute version uh right, three of us watched that sean watched the 90 minute original theatrical did cut. you really i did, did. I okay did cause, yeah i when i was on uh prime last night i couldn't decide i was like either five minutes longer or remaster and i went for a remaster <laughs> Me remaster is no. a good idea because the one on shutter is not the best Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's not great. I'm sure the remaster was much better, but again, I got those five minutes. But again, nothing, apparently, uh, according to IMDb, nothing big was omitted. It's just minor, minor character details. Well, you were saying something about seeing a lot of slow motion, but you you didn't know if that was because of your stream or if that was... uh... I think it's my stream. Okay. (laughs) Although sometimes this movie seems to be going in slow motion. (laughs) And other times it's going so fast, I'm like, wait, what... 
I can't yeah, keep well, that. <laughs> I had trouble following a, a few times. There's right, a well, we're going to solve I think that, all of that That's tonight. the DVD pull quote. I had trouble following. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, we were doing a thing for a little while of uh, the log line, right, of the on the, the poster. Yeah. This one, you ready? Every yes. year, young people disappear. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I was expecting like Paul oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, specific to this movie, that's not very good. No, this is an odd uh-huh. one, that's right? Just a that's, statement. It's a general statement, yes. Yeah, but Stephen that's King like, apparently that's had just a lot like, of. This is the movie that that's going to happen this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was. That's the statement I mean, for 2020. It sounds like uh, every year young people disappear would be like a good tagline for a slasher film. This actually predated the slasher boom, really, because that didn't start until like 1980, right, with uh, Halloween. Yeah. But would you call this a slasher movie, I guess, is the question. No. 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 Okay. Hard no. So this is more, I mean, I think a lot of people in their mind, when they hear Tourist Trap, they think that it's a slasher film, but it's not. This is kind of a, a something that maybe uh, took a lot of influence from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No shit. A yeah. lot. Yeah. Straight up scenes, costume design, <laughs> cinematography. You name it. Yeah. Well, would you be surprised to know that David Schmoller himself uh, went to uh, film school with, I believe he was in the same class or a couple, you know, like a couple years different from Toby Hooper. He was actually, I think uh, Schmoller was also a Texan. So clearly the, in, in, the, uh, the success of Texas Chainsaw, you know, weighed in on his uh, filmic aspirations. Yeah. Uh, did they, did they say, did they say where this was supposed to be? Uh, the license plates say that it is California. Did it? Okay. Yeah, but I don't actually know, uh, you know, whereabouts in California it was filmed. But it, I mean, apparently it's a California movie, but it feels like it could be uh, out, out in somewhere in the middle of Texas, where you know, I, I felt mean, like basically, they were trying to make that feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's very sun baked and kind of hot. Um, this also uh, has a, uh, a re- another relationship with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The production designer, I believe his name is Robert Burns. He did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre production design, put all those chicken bones and all that stuff in there. And this kind of has yeah. like a similar feeling, you think, with the the design of Schlossen's Lost Oasis? Well, I felt it. Yeah, yes. it's a rundown, dirty house. Right, it's mm-hmm. like a rundown gas station in the middle of Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, because always these movies seem to start off with somebody, uh, you know, looking for gas or the car breaks down or Never whatever. I want to tire through the desert. <laughs> right. I think Michaela was hoping that this was going to be rubber two or the prequel that, to rubber. That tire was featured a lot. It seemed important. It did seem right. important. It gets rolled. It gets found. It's like <gasps> he came this way. It has a whole life cycle. It really movie. does. It, yeah, it died in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's rolled by a guy named Woody who ends up taking this uh, tire after he and his girlfriend, their car breaks down. He takes it to this gas station, right? No, it isn't a gas station. He finds a house. It's an oasis. But do we see Slauson's Lost Oasis at that point? I think he just takes it away. What he thinks is, I can't remember if he thought it was a gas station. And he went in. He goes in, and then the movie starts off. This is the very first scene. He finds these uh, odd mannequins all over the place. And the mannequins start laughing hysterically. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They're, like, popping out of closets and stuff. They're not just around. They're popping out of places. Yeah, they're Mm -hmm. like traps. Yeah, it's like a fun house. Yeah. Except it's yes. like an old, dirty, rundown house with fun house right. like trapping. It's, it's a fun house that is no fun. So if you imagine no, like, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house, but with mannequins. In I was st- just going to say it's the Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Fun House. That's what yeah. it is. Oh, from the second one. Oh, maybe. Copyright oh, God, 2020 Saturday Night Freak Show with Texas Chainsaw Fun House. Texas Chainsaw Fun House. I forgot house. all about the end of that second movie where they're in that like carnival yeah. fun house thing. Oh, yeah. Well, well, this movie does take like an odd turn, like right at the very beginning, because uh, again, I don't know if you guys had looked up what was actually going to be happening here. I had no idea. 
I knew nothing about this movie. No idea. So going into it, like right away, there's like an exorcist fucking scene where shit's coming flying out of a cabin, <laughs> a cabinet, uh, or an armoire. Is that what that is? It's an well, armoire. All the mannequins are cackling. Yes, let's. Yes, armoire. And so at this point, we're like, what the hell? And this guy gets attacked by a bunch of objects that are thrown at him. Or actually, this is a For pretty like decent effect. Minutes. Yeah. It's a long time. It's long. I've watched it twice now. It's very long. <laughs> and he eventually gets, uh, what do you call that, uh, siphoned? They siphon it. He gets uh, stuck in the back with like they a do. hollow tube. They, they do close-ups on every, there's a knife, there's like a saw. It's like every other object that you could use to kill someone, and they kill him with a pipe. They tap him like a maple tree, man. They, they shove do. that thing right in there, and the blood comes out. It is kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was like. The payoff was like, okay, could you hear this? Like, oh. And then it's like, man, that could have been a lot more uh, you know, right. violent or something. It goes quiet at that point. Every Why not other go for the head? Is, uh, yeah. I mean, come on. Or the throat, even, you know? They didn't have Probably. the money. Well, probably because it's a PG movie. That's a shocker. Mm, true. What? Why? I don't know how Why Holly? I mean, is that a PG like movie? A, because nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's violence throughout the movie. It has, like, I mean, because this is the thing, I guess, that we got to kind of impress upon people. It's like, it does kind of feel like an R-rated movie, like in its tone. You know, it feels like an R-rated sure. horror movie, but there's no like graphic uh, dismemberments or, you know, graphic scenes of bloodshed which apparently also, pg in 79 was a lot different than it is now yeah yeah the fact that you could get PG-13 away with a lot didn't of exist stuff yet. Right. right didn't exist yet because that yeah. came out you had to wait until like 1985 but that Typical kind of then it let the movie be a scene this is according to joe bob briggs right he said that the the movie because it was pg it could be seen on like saturday afternoon uh, you know, uh, movie syndication on TV. So a lot of kids got to see <laughs> tourists. A lot of kids. <laughs> oh, great. This so why you are the way you are, Colin. Yeah. Well, I did not see, I saw this, I came to this movie just recently. I've only seen it a couple of years ago, but I remember reading uh, Dance Macabre, the Stephen King, uh, everything there is to know about horror uh, right. book that he wrote. And he did have some favorable Favorable things to say about the movie, including the film wields an eerie, spooky power, says Stephen King. There you go. I mean, that could be said about a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. Power, you say. Why would he say power, (laughs) Colin? That's right. That makes me think he hasn't actually watched the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I don't trust Stephen King anymore. Yeah, but back in 1979, he was a big deal. No, no, me and Stephen King are in a fight. (laughs) On Twitter, you, you want Twitter to start fighting? beef on air with him right now? I would love to, Stephen King. <laughs> I don't trust your opinion anymore. Uh, you need to stop. Well, That's the movie like then tweeting. So it yeah. settles into like a uh, you know the, the actual plot brings in. Uh, we meet our main characters, right? Because Woody, the guy in the the whatever that hat, the beach hat, right, has been uh, tapped like a maple tree. His girlfriend, Tina, is still out there. She shows up a little later. But then we get introduced to our core four. Is a quartet? There's the three of them. There's Billy. There's three of them that show up and make them four, right? Right. Billy, Eileen, Becky, I think, Molly. Our, and Molly. Um, so Becky is played by uh, Tanya Roberts, right? Who we all know yep. from that 70s show. That 70s show. Is that pretty much like that's the frame of reference for for Tanya Roberts at this for point? For a lot of people, I think so. Yes. Is Tina, Queen of the Jungle. Yeah, there it yes. is. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tanya Roberts that's been on my freak show list for a while. I know. I downloaded it a while ago. The uh, uh, so she was like a big star. Well, a big star. I don't know. I mean, she was you know top lining a uh, big Columbia a star picture in movie. Her own right. Yeah, I mean, well, she had been in, uh, uh, because I think this was one of her, like, earliest roles, and then she was in, uh, I think she became, like, a later day Charlie's Angels, as that show was, you know, had been on for, like, three or four years or something like that. She was the last angel, apparently. Yeah, she was a Bond girl. She was in uh, A View to a Kill. Oh, that's a terrible one. Yeah. I just remember she shoots Roger Moore with the rock salt or whatever. No, she has a shotgun full of rock salt. Um, oh, I was going to ask if she was the butterfly lady. 
<laughs> oh, that was uh, that was Octopussy. Wasn't that Octopussy? That was Maude Adams. No, that's Beauty to a Kill. Is it? When oh, yeah. the Butterfly Show. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Grace Jones says the... Yes. On the yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, she was later, uh, after like, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, which I think was supposed to be like a big hit and wasn't, uh, she ended up go- doing these uh erotic thrillers you remember the erotic thrillers of the 90s the direct to video oh, yeah. erotic thrillers oh yeah shannon tweed mm-hmm. yeah I was gonna say shannon, tweed. shannon tweed oh yeah she was <laughs> she was my erotic thriller of the 1990s but do you remember the the tanya roberts ones no i think no. i missed out on all of those well, I mean, I didn't see like a whole lot, of, but I remember her being on the box of a lot of them, like Inner Sanctum or something like that. I don't know what the yeah. Um, those movies are never coming to Blu-ray, right? <laughs> That's uh, unless vine- unless Vinegar Syndrome does them no. Yeah, well, I have a theory about that. Like, there's all these, you know, like we're still remastering all these like '70s and '80s movies, but never those '90s movies. It's because yeah. they were they were shot on film, but they were cut together on 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 tape. So yeah. there is no film edited master to remaster. No, they'd have to go back and edit the film. Yeah. Ugh. And you're not going to do that for inner sync. No, no one's going to put that effort into a nineties movie mm-hmm. unless it's, uh, you know, uh, well, no, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> I'm still waiting for graveyard shift, AKA central park drifter. The one about the vampire cab driver. No, right. Yeah. I had a pretty good poster. Uh, so I don't know. I don't really remember the movie. movie. Yeah, poster. sometimes that was enough to get you in to see a movie. Mm-hmm. Well, true. Well, the movie also stars uh, Jocelyn Jones. I believe she is Molly. Okay. And what do we know what about Molly? Her, what else have we seen her in? She looks familiar. I looked uh, her up. I didn't recognize anything. Yeah, I haven't actually. Uh, I didn't look her up beyond this movie. Uh, she comes to us dressed as a Mormon. Definitely. Yep. Well, what's going on with this? So, I mean, basically, we have a couple kids, teenagers, 20 something. Let's go. Teen, 20 don't something. say teenagers. 20 something. <laughs> Who was the dude? That is not a teenager. That is John Van Ness, I believe. John I have no Van idea Ness what he's done. He's 31. Yeah. And they're <laughs> all in this. Uh, what do you call it? No, uh, not hatchback, but um, uh, convertible. No, it's like a Jeep. It's like a Jeep, yeah. but you can put the windshield down. Yeah, it's like an army Jeep. Which, which why yeah. would you want to? Because. Like I'm hungry. I mean, Let's catch some bugs. Yeah, and we're out here. And where are they going? I'm not entirely sure what the whole point of this is, but the movie takes a detour and they end up at the tourist trap. Which is yeah, Slauson's Lost Oasis. Actually, before they get there, we do get a scene where they all go skinny dipping. The girls go skinny dipping, right? And there they this meet. Is the this is the scene that I realized it was not a rated R movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Disappointment abounded. Uh, <laughs> no boobs. And they meet who? The Rifleman. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Connors. Connors. Right. Chuck fucking Connors. Okay, so you're saying Chuck fucking Connors. How do we know Chuck Connors? I only know him from The Rifleman. And uh, I've probably seen him in a movie or two, but I don't remember. Well, uh, oh, Brandon. Brandon. show called Brandon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was the guy yeah, in Brandon. Good. Yeah. Uh, so Chuck Connors was a big, uh, big star, I believe, like back in the, uh, what would it be, the 50s or 60s, right? I think it's the 50s, yeah. And became bigger, I think, with the release of when he went to TV. He was actually, uh, uh, he started off as uh, an athlete, which I suppose wouldn't surprise you based on like how tall the guy is. But I guess he He's played a big guy. He played for the Boston Celtics. And uh, then he was in, uh, I can't remember if it was minor or major league baseball. And it was from there that he went into, into movies. And nice. then uh, from movies to TV, and that's where he became like a big... Uh, Big deal. So the name Chuck Connors it always, to me, is associated with like westerns. Yeah. Oh yeah. My my dad used to talk about watching The Rifleman when he was young. Yeah. But but the name like Chuck Connors, you just have to be in westerns, right? I think yeah, so. It's a good western name. I think so. You, you have, have to, to like you're a name of some sort, Chuck Connors. Yeah. But Michaela might find this of interest. Maybe actually you've seen this. Maybe you've seen Chuck Connors and you don't know it. Do you remember? 
a TV show on Fox, the Fox Network when it was brand new and when Married with Children was on it, right? Mm -hmm. There was a TV show called Werewolf. Werewolf no, sounds awesome though. Yeah, it's so it's about a guy who like you should actually Google some <laughs> of the photos from that of the werewolf. It's like a fucking Rob Botin Rob Botin didn't do it, but it's a howling style like werewolf. This guy named cool. Eric Cord is uh, a werewolf and he's hunting for the guy who turned him into a werewolf. And that's Chuck Connors. This playing, was on Fox? Yeah, it was on Fox. Good. It was like a half hour wow. show, like back in probably like nineteen eighty eight or something like that. Yeah. And the yeah, weird last it lasted 28 episodes. That's pretty good. But now trying to find it is, I'm not sure if there's ever actually been like a real uh, release. Uh oh, we've got a man dying. A man, he's dying. Mute yourself, goddammit. <laughs> Are you okay, Sean? I took Sean, the mic do, you, off. do you have the coronavirus? So you. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Why don't you like me? Welcome back. Um, Sorry, I'm just doing an impersonation of our uh, main antagonist in this movie. <clears throat> right, right. Well, that's something to talk about. But really quick, just one more thing. Uh, so Chuck Connors in Werewolf played a character named Yano Scorzani, right? He was the yes. guy that, you know, oh, we got I like that name. Right? Well, that yes. name was Janos. Janos Poha? Scorzani. He that name is actually Yano Scorsese. Mm. Have you guys ever seen uh, the Night Stalker with uh, Darren McGavin, where he's hunting the yeah. vampire? Um, he's Kolchak. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Kolchak? Is the guy with the hat and the blue jacket? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. hunting a vampire named Yano Scorsani. Uh, I know. Look at that. That's a very vampire name. Has there ever been a vampire movie that wasn't connected to some sort of vampire lore at some point? I mean, come on. Underworld. No, I don't know. That's too cool. Um, so, uh, the, uh, you gotta go farther away, dude. Farther away. I'm sorry. And so, <laughs> <my God>. Mute <laughs> yourself. this is an experiment in social distancing right here. Um, okay, well, so. Do this in person, too. Go blow your nose farther away from the mic. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, the, um, there are protagonists after meeting Chuck Connors, their car has been broken down. He takes them back to his, uh, Slauson's, uh, lost Oasis, which is a, uh, like a little museum out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. Yes. Like psycho. He complains that the, uh, the, the highway moved away and left him kind of here. And not a whole lot of people, uh, come by anymore. Mm -hmm. And the place yes. is populated with all sorts of wax statues and mannequins. Right. I am curious if yep. this movie made you think of another movie. Motel Hell. Like three other movies. Yeah. Yeah. Motel Hell, Waxwork, House of Wax. All right. So it's House of Texas Wax. Texas Chainsaw. Well, it has kind of a Texas Chainsaw vibe, but so did House of Wax. We're talking about the 2005 remake of House of Wax. The one with Paris Hilton in it. You all remember yeah, that. One. Well, no, the old one, the old one was a, a different story, but the new one, I think, ripped off Tourist Trap. If you've seen the new House of Wax, because it does deal with two brothers, one of them has a face that's covered. There is a wax museum. People get encased in wax and become wax figures in it. I mean, it's yeah, like it, it, it feels yes. it feels more like a remake of this movie than the original, like House of Wax. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's kind of amazing how much they, they, they are, you know, similar. Like they just borrowed tropes, called it something else. Um, yeah. But basically, the idea here is what that um, uh, travelers to this uh, uh, off the road tourist trap end up falling prey to uh, Chuck Connors' brother. Well, do we know even who he is in the beginning? This character. Cool, cool. No. How would you describe him? Davy? Plasterface? Is that a name that you looked up? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is indeed. Because I was going to uh, say, if you came up with that, I'm like, whoa, hey, guess what? It turns out that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked that one up. Uh, he's, Davey, he's Davey in the movie. The crew uh, refer to him as Plasterface. Yeah. I wonder why. 
Well, it's a very unusual uh, look. Well, is it unusual? He looks a lot unusual like... Unusual if you haven't seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. There you are. He <laughs> looks got like... got the same hair, even. Yeah, he, yeah. It's got that wig. I mean, he dresses similar. His face is very similar to uh, has Leatherface. Has the makeup similar. Yeah. It's very feminine. Black, He's got a feminine... Eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, yep. who wanders off first? Uh... Uh, Woody's girlfriend, right? The girl with the shawl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the very light yeah. Was that shawl. Eileen? <laughs> I can't remember. Sure. sure. Eventually, Becky and uh, so this is the the downside to watching the movie the day before. It's not as fresh in my memory. <laughs> yeah, what happened to Eileen? Honestly, she- though, this movie was so. Uh, unexpected in a lot of ways. I have. I'm. That's why I think I'm having a hard time remembering everything. Is, right. There were so many like, things. Wait, I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? It felt, yeah. No, it felt like crucial things happened really fast and really yeah. like mixed up. That's why I put I, it on again just before we started this. I'm just like, uh, what? What? What happened? Yeah. Well, like, uh, well, tell tell the people I, I at home mean, like what you're, what Eileen, you're talking about is here. Her name? Yeah. Eileen wanders away. She, Eileen is the one who saw the house across the way from the museum. And so she's the one who's looking out the window asking Chuck Connors, like, who lives there? He's like, oh, nobody, except Davey. And she's like, who's Davey? Or, wait, uh, did he say Davey? Just maybe my brother or something. I'm not even sure. Or Amy or something something like that. Um, He says something vague. He says, uh, don't go outside and all that. And Eileen, being the curious one, decides she has to go investigate. So she's going to go leave the museum and go across the field and examine the house, which is dark, across the way. So she goes and makes her way over there through the house. This is never a good idea. Never a good idea. Uh, You are right. Don't explore, people. Yeah. Especially uh, in this day and age. Either you're going to find a serial killer or a virus, as we know now. If you find yourself in a place and you're looking at something and saying, it looks so lifelike, back out <laughs> because, you know what, that's going to ha- take you down a path that you don't want to be yeah. on. Yeah, because you well, the, there's that like, there is a see scene. how lifelike it's gonna it is. Well, that's exactly it. There's a scene where in the uh, you know because he's got sta- statues of like they're animatronic wax figures or something of Davy Crockett and other uh, you know Western guys there. Um, right. But he has in this little uh, alcove that's all lit up and very ceremonial looking. He has uh, the statue of a woman, and I think even at some point they go up there and Don't they're we like. All? They're like, uh, it, what, yeah, her, she, she like she pokes it and she's like, it feels like flesh. <laughs> yeah. Again, just this is just think about what you just said. <laughs> Take it with you home. Yeah. Let All danger signs. Get the hell out. Yeah. Don't go there. Uh, but of course they do. Becky, uh, Tanya Roberts is extremely keen to go check out the house. She goes and, uh, and crawls in through the, even though. The Mormon, well, we, we I think we said the Mormon, uh, but I, that was a joke. They're all basically dressed like they're out for a, a you know, like a, they're going somewhere, you know, like they're going swimming or going to the beach or something, right? That's Tube tops and short I, shorts. Yeah. That's what it's I originally a, thought that they were going to the beach. It's a nice I summer day. I don't think day. they ever said that, but yeah. Except, Except for, for the one girl, yeah. the Mormon, who's fully dressed head to toe. Molly looks like it's she like, just came from church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big if you've ever seen, hat, if you've ever yeah. seen like the stereotypical Mormon show, like Big Love or anything, she looks like that. Yeah, like a long she clothes. Skirt. She's yeah. very reserved. Well, very. I think also, uh, oh, but she does go skinny dipping, which is like because she's, because she's not because she's not actually Mormon. We're just <laughs> well, right. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> Do you think this movie was a sort of like bring your own wardrobe situation, and she just read the situation way wrong? Well, no, she, because I, I, I felt like the whole time she kind of had that like innocent vibe, and I think that's what they were going for. Yeah, she's the the pure yeah. the pure virginal type. Yeah, blonde pigtails. I mean, for God's sake, yeah. so a big sun also, hat I and, and, and big saucer eyes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's Molly. Molly at some point uh, has that thing where Chuck Connor says, "You remind me of my wife," which is never a good thing. 
<laughs> Especially when he has an effigy of his wife made in wax with skin that feels like flesh in an alcove in his little museum. He's like, let me touch you. Oh, you feel like my wife, too. <laughs> he's and very creepy. And he's got a lot yeah, of Dr. Because, Pepper. Because before they even touch the mannequin and find out that it feels like flesh, they find the photo album where they find the picture of the woman who clearly is the wax figures modeled after. Yeah. Like, that right there is a bad sign. And there's also a picture of Davey, the brother, in this photo album. Mm. Right? Presumably yes. before, we assume at this point that he has been somehow disfigured or something, and that's why he's wearing these masks. It is assumed, I think, that Davey is the uh, the killer, right? Is he a right. killer? What's he doing okay. with these people? He's um, making molds of them. He's monologuing at them a lot. <laughs> a lot. Sean can do his voice. Why don't you like me? <laughs> <laughs> the party started now. <laughs> it's like, is he trying to do the sound of like talking with the the trach with, uh, a, with the tra- the tra- thing tra- with the voice box? Yeah, I don't know. I think he's just trying to. I think it's Chuck Connors trying to disguise his voice somehow. It's just like. Mm. <laughs> Well, that's the shocking surprise is that it turns out that there isn't actually two brothers. There's just Chuck shocking. Connors. Were you shocked? I was not shocked. <laughs> I was not shocked. <laughs> I was not shocked. Especially after he met them at the like watering hole oasis thing and gave them a whole lecture. I was like, this guy's definitely got an axe to grind. Yeah. He's like, one of those friendly. I didn't try but- to hide it at all. I didn't feel like. That's, he's kind of like the uh, the character, what Mick from uh, Wolf Creek, right? Friendly, but too uh, too too friendly. Absolutely. Or the guy from House of Wax, ironically, but uh, yeah. Well, Becky ends up like going into the house, and I think she goes down into the basement. She that's where she finds Tina, Woody's girlfriend, right? Who's down there on? Well, she finds her in a in a bedroom. Um, and unveils. Yeah. Yeah, it's upstairs still because she gets brought down to the basement. Well, she yeah, finds but, all the other mannequins, right? Yeah, the she first finds girl. a room yeah. full of mannequins. Yeah, and, see, we can't pass up a specific scene. I think it's right around here that I, I still can't stop thinking about. Is she the one that gets like buried alive by the female mannequins? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Uh, I thought that was later. Uh, I think it was later, uh-huh. but this the whole, like, I, why does this whole thing sounds like a Danny Elfman score? Like, I, 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 I feel like, I feel like he sampled this and used it for his score. This sounds like Danny Elfman. The, uh, it sounds like Beetlejuice in certain points as well. I thought of Beetlejuice and Scrooged. Yes. With Bill That's what it sounded like. Yes. It's creepy as fuck. And ironically, yes. it's by Pino DiNaggio who did, uh, you know, Carrie and, uh, all the Brian De Palma nice. movies. This is a weird score for this movie. I yeah, will well, say. it's really it's like eerie. It's really, uh, it's really unsettling. Well, I think it elevates this movie actually because it's like no, a big orchestral it, score. It well, I mean, he uses. So what we're talking about is there's a lot of uh, sounds like what Sean's <laughs> making there. All of the uh, all of the mannequins at some point start doing this weird, like the you know, it's the, the whole thing where the mannequins' eyes move inside there, you know, and they they start to vocalize and make that sound. The score by Pino Danaggio, you would be surprised to know, maybe, is the most expensive thing about this movie. It cost one-sixth reportedly of the, of the budget? <laughs> one-sixth of the budget one-sixth of this movie. One-sixth of the budget. That guy, that guy knew, he's just like, I- I'll do it, but it's going to cost you a lot, and that's it. So if you don't want me to do it, fine, but it's but realistically, cost. It, realistically, it was worth it, because it was the creepiest part of this movie. <laughs> right, yeah. it's, the, it, it's a very odd part of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, still mesmerized by that scene though of the female mannequins one by one like <laughs> falling on top of this woman and her just not doing anything about it no well i'm just curious what would you call it a mannequin orgy sean yeah uh, very much so if they were moving a little bit like on her it'd be, it'd be creepier but it's it is a it is a mannequin orgy in this movie. But, but one by one before they fell their mouths like fell open oh. yeah. Yeah, it was really bizarre. Yeah, it was, that was fucking creepy, I oh, thought. Yeah. Really creepy. <laughs> yeah. It's very creepy. It's yeah. very creepy. 
and that scene felt really long. It felt like they were falling on top of her for forever. And yeah. I was just like, what the fuck is happening right now? Yeah, this director likes his scenes. Like he's like, we're gonna we're gonna let the scene breathe. We're gonna take we're just we're not gonna edit this down. We're gonna it's gonna happen. In real well, time, this is gonna happen. There's only two ways this is like happening, right? There's either like magic at work that's making them do that, or there's some sort of like robotic animatronic setup. So either way that's insane. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because I okay. wasn't sure what the hell was going on there, you know. Because again, yeah, is it is it magic or is it because I guess is it magic or is it Maybelline? I don't know what you're saying. Or some kind of are they all robots? Are they alive somehow? Like are under some kind that's, of control? That's what I was going to ask. At what point do they reveal that? Because I felt like I missed something. The, the first murder. They do. Eileen, when when she gets murdered, it's. Pretty much revealed then, because like, he uses telekinesis or something to strangle her with a yes. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's that right. Scene, like there's the scarf around her neck, and he's just looking at different places. Oh my god, in the I room. forgot about that whole scene. And he kills her. Yeah. So right I mean, then, it's just like oh, telekinesis. Looking which back, the, I guess which is the makes... fucking weirdest thing. Sorry, Holly, I'm, I'm cutting you off, okay. but it's just it's out of uh, not what I expected. From this <laughs> it is out of fucking <laughs> nowhere. In a, it can't oh, be just a that poster. Yeah. No, it is a fucking telekinesis movie. Fuck you. But, wow. whoa, whoa, but, whoa. Looking back, but looking back, like I, I guess I didn't. It I, that didn't dawn on me. Like I was just really confused watching it. Yeah, I couldn't like, tell. What? Yeah, I was. Yeah, like, every scene I was like, "Is this animatronics or is this telekinesis?" Every yeah, scene. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, see, once, and, we, uh, once we had animatronic, or and once we had the telekinesis, I guess I was kind of going like, okay, so this is just out of left field weird. But now we've got like it's basically if Jason also was telekinetic, right? And so not only is he coming after you as a physical presence, which we get to at some point, yeah, he can also throw shit at you. Like uh, it's like you can combine him and the girl from Part Seven and put them together. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, that's terrifying. Which like. I, like it's this movie is so complicated with it's like and then we're gonna do this it's like it can't just be a like slasher movie it has to be a mannequin slasher maybe then we're gonna add telekinesis and then there's gonna be like a family quote-unquote twist like it, it ha- keeps stacking the tropes that's right this movie yeah. is fucking unique this is what you're going it for it, it really is it's i've never else. seen anything like it unique is it is it unique or is it just taking all their favorite parts from movies they like? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. What, you, what year mean, was Carrie? That, uh, that's 76. What I mean. Yeah, right. but, so but you get like, it, I've never unique? seen them combined in this way before. And the telekinesis right. thing, I guess, was the idea of like, you know, uh, Charles Band. I think the original idea was Shocker. more like a straight slasher, you know, Texas Chainsaw. And he said, what about telekinesis? Although fucking dolls have been a thing of Charles Band's entire, you know, oeuvre. Mm-hmm. oeuvre. Yep. oeuvre. Yeah. 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 Well, the guy also, Davey, the alter ego of Chuck Connors, it's later revealed when he puts the mask on, uh, takes people down to the basement and smothers them. Yeah. with And describes in horrifying detail how he's going to encase them in plaster. The plaster will burn. And it, <laughs> yes, and those, this is the no. most terrifying part of this movie. For anybody who's ever watched a behind the scenes of any special effects movie where they had to do the plaster casting of the main actor. Oh my god, I could never. I could never do it. Never. So, it, when they it, stick so the straws the most, up their nose? Yeah, oh no, nope, never. Never. Only like, imagine it without the like, straws. You'll be under here but for like, like two hours, you'll that, be that fine. straws with keeping you alive is terrifying. Yeah, fuck that. Mm-hmm. No, that is always the most terrifying part of any behind-the-scenes thing. And he's describing this in detail to the people he's going to murder while doing it. And this part is terrifying. And he's laying it on like three inches thick on their face. Ugh. He put so much of that on that poor actor's face. Yeah. <sighs> and and uh, it's like, you will not, you won't die from... Uh, not breathing, your heart will explode <laughs> of fright before you suffocate. I know it's like, fucking fuck r- it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> oh. 
uh, for a PG movie. That's why I was like, what? Yeah, that's fucking rough. How did you get it's this? Like, oh, it's only PG. I'll set my eight year old down to watch this. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, they died, but they died in a rough way. Oh, shit. Fuck. Uh, no. <laughs> and in the basement, he's got like all the spare mannequin parts. Like, there's a whole thing of like legs hanging from the ceiling. There's a shelf of hands. There's a shelf of heads. So it's like just spare body parts neatly organized all over this basement, too. Okay. Yes. And he's got his people chained up in the basement. Uh-huh. Old Becky ends up down there, and so does Billy, I think, right? But here's a thing yeah. that uh, I don't know if this is jumping ahead, but what we understand later, right, is that because the character is telekinetic, he can. So basically, what I understand, right, is that Chuck Connors. Even though he's pining for his wife, right? He keeps on saying about how he's, he's, he loves his wife. Yes. Caught his wife and his brother whoring around in his whoring. own bed. Whoring. <laughs> Which apparently he has the right to shoot him. Let me, the law says if uh, it's legal. If uh, they catch your brother and your wife whoring around, you can shoot him. So he killed them both. What, what law is this? Yeah, California law. That's what I was saying. It's a California law. Um, so, but... Racked with guilt, right? He erects a statue to his wife, but we think it's a statue, but it actually is. He can control them with telekinesis. He can reanimate these characters so he can, like, every night have conversations with his dead family members. Yeah, I'm sure it's just conversations. Uh, yeah, hmm. it's not fucking There's definitely anybody. no sexual component to that at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's PG, so you're going to have to leave that. To your imagination. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I need to see it. That. There's I mannequin fucking happening. It. Yeah. Maybe in the remake. Because this movie should be remade. Should it? I don't know. But we'll, we'll get to that later. I mean, we've already, we, we've yeah, already got sure, it. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, why not? But so basically then, uh, so he is able to reanimate or animate uh, inanimate objects so much so and with such precision that you, if you were looking at one, may actually think that it is a real person. Yes. So this brings the question, at what point did some of the characters die in the movie, right? Because that was where I was kind of, there's a reveal later, um, because ultimately this all centers on Molly, right? Molly looks like the wife. Molly's going to be you know, the object of his affection. He's trying to like do something special with Molly, right? So Billy, at some point, comes in to save her. He busts down the door. And Chuck Connors is like, well, Billy's not going to save you. And he wanders up there and, like, twists Billy's head off and pulls his arm off. And it turns out that Billy's actually a mannequin. Right. That surprised the shit out of me. Yeah. 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 I was not expecting that. But then the question is, like, when did Billy actually die? Who knows? Because I thought yeah. maybe it was when he, he got put in the basement. Well, in the basement, you remember there's that one scene where he strangles him. Oh, right. Well, I said oh, yep. he died there. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like Chuck Connors has superhuman strength and is able right. to like he lift him up, him up with up one arm. And yes, yes, yes. And then later he's chained to the table again. And we're like, okay, did uh, so what happened there? He just like uh, uh, strangled him and like, what the hell? But I think that's the mannequin that he's reanimating. And they, you know, Tanya Roberts doesn't know the difference because Chuck Connors is like putting the uh, the mojo zap on it. Do you think that I'll he's that. Um, like altering their perception of uh, reality or it's just like this reanimated wax figure is so lifelike and articulated because it's made on the, a mold of them that you standing there couldn't tell the difference? Between that and I'll, I'll say he's just reanimating stuff, <coughs> so you can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this dude's got telekinetic powers. All bets are off, man. <laughs> yeah. But we do think that he's actually going out and killing people and bringing them back to the house and making molds of them. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So you don't think... You saw he's how just... many like parts and people he had in that house? There was tons. But they, you don't think that they're just uh, mannequins that, um, like, Davy made back when Davy was alive? Because Davy is apparently like a, he made mannequins or whatever. I'm sure some I think, might I be. I think it's but, both. I think it's yeah, both. Because, I, I mean, obviously I he had, like, 
like like the Davy Crockett one, like you said, like some of them, I think he really did just have a museum. You know, some of them are fake, but yeah. What about I the think- baby ones? There was infant mannequins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there were. Yeah. There was definitely, more than one. Definitely dead babies. Well, that's a disturbing thought <laughs> for your PG well, rated movie, horror movie. Put that thought out there. Not, not me. <laughs> Well, so I'm assuming that uh, Billy wasn't actually Billy when uh, we see him do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, you know, jump through the window or whatever. Right. To escape. Yep. Which is pretty good. So that was actually like maybe a mannequin Billy running away or whatever. Uh, There's many scenes of the mannequins in hallways. I love that one where uh, because uh, 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 the Davy persona, right? sits there and has or no i suppose uh, uh chuck connor sits there and has dinner with his brother at one point yes the dummy mm-hmm. and he's feeding it and then the head falls off yeah um but there's a scene where the uh the i think billy and becky are trying to escape and you know because the hallway is full of mannequins they kind of freeze yeah so he won't find them yeah yeah and you sit there going, that's clearly Tanya Roberts right there. Like, nobody's being fooled by <laughs> this. Clear, yeah, and clearly Billy. Yeah, it's like, eh. But Billy was a mannequin, right? So he would be not noticed. It's all a trap. Exactly. A trap. So, it's a tourist trap. Bam. Uh, would you say how many dun, times dun, did dun. they say that in this movie? Uh, two or three times. No more than three. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, as we get toward the, the, the climax of the movie, after all bets are off, we realize that, um, that uh, you know, uh, Slauson is actually the killer. He's and what he's doing. So he's going to try and somehow, what, was he, you think he was trying to get, uh, you know, he's basically trying to, to get Molly to take the place of his wife, I suppose, right? Right. Yeah. But that doesn't Seems go so like well. I would say not. Because? Uh oh. Uh oh. Sean's like watching the movie right Sean's now. Sean's a mannequin. As, as we're... It's not really Sean, it's a Sean looking mannequin. <laughs> um, I forgot. Well, she ends up planting a uh, an axe well, well, in the well, guy. Yeah, she does axe him in the neck. Yes. Yeah. There's that. And there is that, so she's not quite convinced mm-hmm. by this whole see, thing. That, see, but that part when um when he's like dancing with the wife mannequin. Oh my god! Oh yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember so that's, disturbing. That's the part where, like, I, I was wondering what, what you were saying, Colin. If he really is altering their perception of reality, because I felt like she was. I felt like Molly was like hallucinating and seeing something that wasn't there. So right. that's the part that I feel like he was altering reality. What would you guys think? Maybe I mean, was that, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to, within the context of the movie, based on the, the effects or whatever they had at the time, I'm like, are we supposed to think that this is just, you know, cause he's, he's twirling around the room with the dummy of his wife. And then at some point right. the movie cuts to show an actual woman in his arms. Right. Okay. So are we just supposed to assume that, you know, this is her, uh, the animated version of her, and you can't tell the difference. It's like I think I think it, it cuts to like what he sees because I think he's a, a little delusional at this point. So yeah, I think that's cut, what what he sees. Yeah, but they cut to Molly, and her reaction is surprised. Like that's what she's seeing too. Like to that. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. That could be what she's seeing as well. Yeah, because I think the 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 movie or these scenes are from her point of view. Yeah. Right. As our central yeah. character. Yeah. She kind of loses it a little bit uh, at the very end after she's killed him. Uh, and the movie ends with a freeze frame that's kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the best. Michaela. It's Michaela the best lost sitcom it freeze frame. frame. I of... lost this. <laughs> I lost it. I could not believe what I was seeing. What? what? And Sean was, a, Sean was a few minutes behind this because he watched the five minute longer version. I was like, Sean, you need to hurry up. <laughs> right. You, you're just like, <laughs> the message was, it ends on a freeze frame? I'm just like, wait, what? 
<laughs> and boy, does, and my question the most was like, insane wait, freeze frame does she really drive life. away with a with a car full of mannequins? She does. Yes, she does. She does indeed. Yep. And then we freeze frame in a close up of her and her mannequins in the convertible. Just Everyone's ready crazy. for a road trip. <laughs> Wouldn't you be insane after uh, a night like this? I would be. Why, why are you taking them with you? Uh, she doesn't know any better at this point. She's like, she she is insane. She is, uh, what's her name in the back of the truck at the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like, she, looks, she, Sally. Looks, she looks yeah, happy. She looks happy. She's Sally, she's Sally Hardesty at this point. <laughs> she looks what? She's nuts. She's but Sally she looks- Hardesty at this point. She's nuts. She's like, everybody gather in. We're leaving. Yeah, because she she's looks got all, like, all her friends in the truck and she's leaving. Well, it's got that kind of, yeah, I mean, it freeze frames on her face, which is just kind of frightening, you know, in that smile, right? Because, yeah, I mean, that's the question is like, what is she thinking at this point? I think that, you know, these movies in the 70s, they were all doing this thing where uh, you would experience something so horrifying that your mind would break. Yes, she broke. This is true yeah. horror, right? Which I kind of miss in movies now because nobody ever seems to completely go crazy. That's scary to me. No. I guess that's scary yes. when I see somebody go nuts in a movie like, oh, my God, they really experienced yeah. the, an ordeal. Right. And I think that's what she has. And she, so, yeah, so she's taking her friends with her. The only question is, are these uh, the dummies of her friends or are these her friends who have been encased in uh, in wax? That's what I was wondering. Are they are they dead bodies? Or are they mannequins? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Because <laughs> they look like mannequins. It just looks like whatever she could get away with. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if he was making molds of certain people. I mean, like at one point he torments her with uh, like, here's my new friend's head or whatever. And it's Woody and he does the ball, you <laughs> well, know, I, that that is all right. Hold on. Uh, we skipped all by this. That is one of my favorite parts. It's like me, my friend. And he's throwing the fucking head at her as he, <laughs> she's running away and everything. That's the best. The head and lands on the ground. Kind of has these like. It has these like gaping holes for eyes and a big yeah. gaping hole for a mouth. It's kind of like yeah, loose and like, saggy. Meet my friend. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like, and then it laughs. It's just like ah ah ah. <laughs> that's the best. Oh man, I loved it. Just like that's the weirdest shit. He's running around, mannequin face, that blonde bob wig. Oh, that's oh, right. It's, yeah. It's fucking weird. Like, there's a lot of, I don't know if you've described it to you, dear Brailler viewer, but like, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of chase scenes with, you know, um, him in the plaster mask and just weird wigs. That's it. There's a it, blonde bob wig that is fucking disturbing. The, like, oh. costume design and styling of this movie is truly horrifying. It really is. Yeah. What are you talking about Tiny Roberts' tube top? I mean, Love it's me. a miracle that thing stayed on as well as it did through. <laughs> right? Please. There had to have been some double-sided tape involved there. Absolutely. Gotta be. I was amazed. And yeah, like yeah. I paid a lot of attention to like, like, wow, that's some amazing uh, engineering there. It's holding that thing up. It is engineering. Scientists were involved in that. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> mm, love me. <laughs> yep. Davy's a character. Well, I mean, uh, I suppose uh, with an ending like that, it's like, well, I mean, basically she's going off to, you know, uh, enjoy time in the loony bin at some point. Oh, they have this uh, nice uh, shot so. of like what the vulture sitting on the sign. Oh, I love the, road the vulture. Sign, yeah. <laughs> Which I suppose is a bad omen whenever you have a uh, vulture near your, your tourist yeah. trap. Mm, close to the public. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> The more you do it, the more robotic you sound. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to be like, cannot compute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Danger, danger, danger. <laughs> Will Robinson. That is seriously where I thought he was going with that performance. <laughs> it was like, I want to sound like a it robot. It was a choice. Yeah. It was a choice. Well, um, I guess, uh, where else did I hear it said that uh, Chuck Connors thought that he was going to, in his later day years, was going to become like, uh, you know, like, why why would he do, a, you know, a horror movie or whatever? Uh, and he said he wanted to become the Boris Karloff of the 80s. 
Yeah, make me the horror monster of the 80s. Yeah. We weren't looking for that. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't. Well, this goes with that trend, I think, of where you get guys who are at the end of their career and put them as top liners or whatever in uh, in 70s and 80s, early 80s horror movies. <laughs> so, wait, if Tourist Trap was in, like, a franchise, like a Universal Monster situation, who would he have crossovers with? In the 80s? Frankenstein. Well, this is 79, so. Oh. Right. It has to be seventy nine onward, right? Yeah. This is his. This is his uh, introductory into the cinematic universe, and then right. he gets get the two hander later on. <laughs> I'm going to Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's too highbrow for this movie. I think he'd be horny like, teenagers like the burning must die. Level. The burning yeah. level. Yeah. The burning. He'd he'd meet up with Cropsy in the burning. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, well, uh, you've heard us uh, talk about Tourist Trap at length, but what we haven't told you is whether we liked it or whether we'd recommend it to you. So uh, stick with us for a little while longer. But first of all, I'll tell you what, friends and neighbors, what we're going to do is we're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. (laughs) Thanks, Igor. Did that come across? I hope so. Yeah, Igor's got to stand very far away now. We're now Igor is just emailing us. Social distancing. He might have started coronavirus. As far as we know, I think he he is coronavirus. Well, he just stays, you know, in his little. I got him locked. There's a padlock. Is he just reaching through the wall? No, he's emailing. He's adopted. I gave him a tablet. He's figuring it out. (laughs) Colin, I like to imagine. I like to imagine you and Igor. It's like that scene in Arrival, and you're like Amy Adams writing on the dry erase Mm -hmm. board to talk to him in his tank. Yeah. (laughs) It's very close to the truth. He's more advanced than I thought he was. <laughs> well, well, Colin uh, had to figure out his language first. <laughs> right, that know. took many, well, that many took, years. Yeah, years ago, years ago, <laughs> years. when I found him, I went into yeah. a, an old <laughs> yeah. castle, yes. and there he was. I adopted him and brought him home with me. Uh, like right. So yeah, he's, a, he's an Oompa Loompa. Well, to tell you, we got to tell you how you can get a hold of us and join the Freak Show family. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow along on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So tonight about Tourist Trap, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, we can expect a lot of Chuck Connors and short shorts, but thankfully not together. Also, it is that 70s show, Tanya Roberts. He says, we need more horror movie villains with literal superpowers. Jason can teleport, so I guess that counts. But this movie is actually a lot of weird, cheesy fun. Yeah, bring on the superpowers in horror movies. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. You can do literally anything you want then. <laughs> uh, Nelson. Get creative with it. That's right. Or you can be like a, a fucking Friday the 13th or a Nightmare on Elm Street remake and be in a dream world and do nothing. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. Well, Nelson Nascimento says, I love this movie. It's an amalgamation of everything and anything, and somehow it works. One wonders what would have been if John Carpenter directed this as originally planned. Some scenes go on too long, and it would have benefited for better editing, but still, I love it. Some scenes do go on too long. John Carpenter's tourist trap, huh? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because apparently... It would have been more thoughtfully shot. I think uh, Erwin Yablon's, uh, you know, obviously that's the connection, but he said that yeah. he, he hated the Pino Dinaggio score because he was hoping for something more electronic like what John Carpenter was doing with Halloween. Yeah, I feel like this should be something more urgent in the score. Um, there's some, it, it gets grandiose at certain points in this movie. It's weird. Yeah. And all those like music box, uh, like weird. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Well, there's that, yeah, and then it gets big and like orchestral, and it's just like mm-hmm. I was not expecting that. Well, Fresno Film Buff says this is a good one. It's legit creepy. It's creepy. Yeah, it's got some unsettling stuff in it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, about uh, last week's movie, Final Destination 3, Rusty Ryan writes <laughs> in and says, Hello, gang. I enjoyed the podcast on Alone in the Dark. I had not checked the Facebook page before the episode, so I was immediately dreading the awful Christian Slater, Tara Reed, Ewe Bowl garbage heap. But then I found out it wasn't. <laughs> I'm reading this in the wrong order. This is for Alone in the Dark. He said, uh, I was almost disappointed because I was imagining how much you would have trashed it, the uh, Christian Slater one. But he says, you casually mentioned The Hidden. You should watch it. It's great. It's got some questionable 80 special effects, but a great story that can make up for that. It also features a young Danny Trejo in a small part. Oh. Interesting. Uh, my unfab life about Final Destination Three says uh, I'll never hear Roller Coaster of Love again without thinking of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? Roller Coaster. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, Jacob Cotner writes in and says, this is a fun entry in a series that could have taken itself too seriously. The characters are cool and the kills are unique. The tanning bed scene always sticks out to me as well as the nail gun. Mm-hmm. I, agree. I agree. Nelgun's good. Yep. Uh, Sushi Fang says, "I remember this installment <laughs> of the Final Destination more clearly without even watching it because of the premonition scene. I had an experience of being in a theme park ride and having it malfunction, and we were upside down for nearly twenty minutes. Well, that's awful. Well, that being yes, said, if worst. you had a choice, what deaths would you like to see in any future Final Destination movies?" Oh, that's a good question. Mm. Uh, again, let's place this in the category of questions I wish I knew before the podcast was happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, ooh, um, I mean, like, I, I would look to this movie as uh, they be, being smothered by uh, uh, by uh, a plastic mask. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't have anything. Any, <laughs> no, anything with being smothered would not be good. You know, uh, I, I, anything with less dignity, I think, is more entertaining. And as those movies go on, they get yeah. less and less dignified. I yeah. throw, find a porta potty death man. Someone falls oh, in no. a porta potty and can't oh. climb out. There you go. Oh, you know what would be good? And then it gets what they didn't do? In, you know, would be a good death um, with the final destination, especially with part three. You ever see those um, at amusement parks? The slingshot. Where they put oh. two people in the slingshot yeah. and they launch yeah, yeah, yeah. snaps off. <laughs> that would be a good death. Launch them? Yes, that, that would, would be, be good. good. Yeah, that would scare the shit out of me. That's one I would not want to die of. But if they do that, I want to hear like the Wiley e. Coyote like whistle when they go off into the air and the like yeah. explosion when they hit the ground. <laughs> yes. Are there any water slide deaths in any movies? Any what? Any what? Water slide deaths, like at a water park. I don't think so. They don't you, usually go. Holly, like, did you watch that movies. documentary? No. <gasps> the one about oh. Action Park. Yes. Yeah, where, that the, where the kid got nuts. decapitated and shit. <gasps> Holly, we'll Stop. talk off mic. You have <laughs> okay. to watch this documentary. It's fucking wild. Well, you were saying okay. the uh, water slide death. Ironically, I was just listening to a podcast where they're talking about the unmade Friday the Thirteenth 3D like reboot thing that never happened. Oh, yeah. And that was what they were trying. Like at some point, Jason sticks a machete up through a slide as a as a guy's going down it. <laughs> nice. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, it's a good visual that. death. Somebody gets split in half. Yikes. Well, all right. About uh, Alone in the Dark, the movie we watched two weeks ago, Feline Fatal writes in and says, I remember reading an article one time about Tim Burton, and he said that he was so intimidated and terrified directing both Jack Palance, who starred in Alone in the Dark, and Jack Nicholson at the same time for Batman. And uh, Feline Fatal says, I would too, Tim. I would too. It's a lot yeah. Of crazy wouldn't, energy. yeah, wouldn't we all? It is. Trivia fact. Jack Nicholson was the first choice to play the twin characters in Tourist Trap. And Jack Palance. Jack That'd Palance. be awesome. They turned Jack Palance. Yep. Yes. I, uh, yeah, hell yeah. Let's, let's remake it and that. do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, with Jack Palance is such a... He seems like it's just a crazy dude in general. Like, wouldn't you want to yeah. cast him in all your horror movies? Everything. Oh, yeah. Every time I think of him, I just think of that scene in Tango and Cash when he's holding up the rest. Tango. <laughs> Cash. <laughs> he puts him in the maze. <laughs> well, Sean Roger, he writes in. Sean says he kept thinking that uh, Dwight Schultz in Alone in the Dark was Alton Brown. Yeah, yeah, 
I can see that. He looked like him, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jacob Laws writes in and says, not only did Jason don the hockey mask worn by the bleeder, but also Wayne Grow in Heat wore a similar mask in the armored truck heist at the opening of that movie. That's true. But I think that is the default, like, hockey mask. Like, when we think of hockey mask, we think of Jason, but I think the actual, right. like, but goalie that is mask hockey. is. Yes. Yeah. And uh, William Douglas wrote in and said, Jack effing shoulder, the director. <laughs> and there's five exclamation marks. That is the only time that has ever happened. <laughs> well, it's only because we haven't shoulder. watched biggest, The Hidden biggest yet. Biggest fan right there. We're Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's uh, Revenge. Biggest Jack Shoulder fan ever. Biggest one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you for writing in. We hope you'll continue to. And now we're going to go do. around the room. We need it. We're lonely now. I know. Yeah, we are very lonely. We need the letters. We need your writing in more than ever. Yeah. Tell us um, what you're watching during your quarantine. Right. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't feel your love before just because I'm a broken person. But now that I'm all by myself, I am desperate for you people to write in. Please tell me you love us. Love me. I need some. I need something during this time. Tell us how, so. you're, tell us how you're coping. What are you doing during? Yeah. What, what What are you doing? Are you? How yeah. are you coping? What other things are you listening to uh, besides us? Obviously. Yeah. Um, like, wh what are you doing to get through this uh, uh, thing? We'll share with you what we're doing. You know, let us know. Yeah. Please do. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to go off it. Uh, so, all right, we're going to go around the room, the virtual room. We're going to tell you individually we thought of Tourist Trap, starting with... John! John! What did Hi. you think of Tourist Trap? Um, this is a, a wild fucking movie. Um, I was... Uh, I, I've known about Tourist Trap for uh, years, maybe decades, um, but I never knew what, what it was about. So watching it, um, uh, I was flabbergasted uh, with what happened in it. I was never expecting a telekinesis movie, so that just blew everything out the window. Um, it is uh, – the, there's moments in this movie where it gets very uh, – scenes get very long. Um and, uh, uh, but you know, I suppose that's okay. Um, uh, I had, <laughs> I had a fun time watching this movie cause I just didn't, I had no idea what was going to happen next, which is, um, when you're watching a movie like that's, um, uh, especially something from the, what, what year was this? 1979? 79. Yeah. 79. Yeah. Like a movie from 1979 and I don't know what's going to happen. Like that's not. Like I that that is like the grade A because you know um, uh, at a certain point we think we've seen it all um, and then I get a movie like this and I'm just like I don't know what the fuck's going on um, okay but I, I was entertained from front to back um, so uh, I'm 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 gonna recommend Tour Strap because I didn't know what was gonna happen I wasn't expecting this I don't think you will either. Um, and I had a good time watching it. Um, there are some long scenes. There's some monologues in this. But, I mean, if you know Chuck Connors from his earlier stuff and then you come to this and watch this, you're going to be very surprised. So uh, I will recommend Tourist Trap. It was a very – it was a surprise to me. So uh, I think you should watch it. Um, Holly? Holly, what do you think <laughs> about Tourist Trap? Um, I'm going to try to make it quick because my battery is getting low. Mine um, too. <laughs> um, I had not heard of Tourist Trap until we watched Motel Hell and Colin brought up Tourist Trap and said, oh, you want to see yeah. you want to see it? the motel that you're hoping for? It's Tourist Trap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, other than that, I didn't know anything about this movie. I didn't know anything going into it. Um, and... I agree with Sean that like there were some slow parts um, that drug on a little bit, but I agree with Sean that it's just bonkers. Like it's, I had no idea like what to expect. I also didn't know what was happening several times, yeah. which yeah. was, <laughs> which was a little irritating. I must say I was a little lost. Um, I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention or if they just weren't clear, but I was a little lost. Yes. Times, which, okay. Thank you. Yeah. It could go either I was way in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I didn't, care for that aspect being confused but 
the fact that it was so bonkers was just entertaining as hell. And, and I'm, I'm surprised I liked it as much as I did considering it was PG and it really wasn't giving, <laughs> it really wasn't giving us like the kills I wanted or like the horror aspect that I wanted, but the craziness definitely delivered. And, um, it was entertaining. It was, I, I had said in our group chat last night when we were watching it together, I, I liked the exposition points because Chuck's character reminded me of Charlton Heston in Wayne's World 2. <laughs> <laughs> when he's at the gas station, he's like, ah, oh, Gordon Street. <laughs> like, which I kind of loved. I don't know. There was just something charming about his exposition, so I didn't mind the monologuing too much. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. It was crazy and... And yeah, the craziness was enough that it made up for the other things that it may have lacked for what I kind of expected going into it. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to recommend it. I was on the fence, but I, I think I enjoyed it enough that I will recommend Tourist Trap. I think it was fun. Michaela. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you said, Holly. I, uh, I mean, I was very much under the influence watching this movie, which I think <laughs> hurt and helped. Like, it hurt my sure. comprehension yeah. of the movie, but it helped my enjoyment. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but, like, yeah, like, I, like, I'm in the same boat as you. I was like, did I miss something, or is it just not clear? And then I was like, who cares? Like, this movie's so weird. Who cares? Yeah. Like, and uh, it's, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And this is, like, a freak show movie with a capital F, man. Like, it doesn't get any more freak show than, like, this, probably. <laughs> um, it's freaky. It's just, There's a lot of loose like, jaws in this movie. Yeah, like I'd heard, I had heard the title and such a great title for a slasher movie, and then I was like, "Wait, this is not what I at all what I expected." No, but no. so much more than I ever could have expected. Um, it, and I'll I'll be thinking about that scene of those mannequins falling on top of her into the orgy <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> that was just like, why why is this happening? How is it happening? And like, it it does feel like a long eighty five minutes sometimes because some of the scenes are a little slow. And just kind of, they keep doing the same thing over and over again to like fill for time. It's, but it's, it's crazy. It's a crazy movie. It kind of is seeing is believing sort of thing, I think. So you definitely got to check it out. Colin, what'd you think? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was kind of surprised that it took me as long as it did to actually come around to this movie. I mean, I've seen, it seems like many other of the, the titles of this caliber from that era at this point, and that one had slipped past me. And so I finally got a chance to watch it like last year or whatever. And I'm like, man, this is, I think like what you guys are saying, it's just, it's so odd. You know, like the idea that like, you're somehow going to dump telekinesis into the middle of of the texas chainsaw massacre right yep. Le leatherface is telekinetic is such a, <laughs> it's an idea that i think because i guess when i first saw you know that first scene i'm like uh it's a fucking telekinetic movie usually I, I, you know i check out but this was like such a uh, yeah, it's surprise it's an unusual wrinkle to it i mean so it does actually even though it is a hodgepodge of putting together uh you know separate you know carry and meets the texas chainsaw massacre or whatever it creates this thing that is unlike anything else that you're ever going to see, you know, cause nobody's going to do that again. I mean, it's like, it's just goofy. It's bonkers, but it works. I think because, you know, it still has enough of the slasher movie, uh, tropes to it. So you kind of feel like, okay, I get it. This is the Hansel and Gretel, you know, like the, the, the teens that go off, you know, the beaten track and then they find the place that they shouldn't go to the witch's house or whatever. And then they're going to get, you know, covered in, uh, in wax and, uh, you know, taken advantage of in horrible, awful ways by some demented lunatic. And then you got Chuck Connors who I suppose like there, he does have a personality when he's on screen. You know, he does kind of command the screen. Uh, so, you know, it was good that they got him to, to play in the movie. Uh, the score, I suppose it's idiosyncratic. It doesn't feel like the score that belongs in this movie. But again, this. It really doesn't. No. But that adds to that sensation of like what in the this is a weird yeah. mix of things Very that don't feel like they should <laughs> Every be choice together is wrong but it yeah works. 
<laughs> it just makes it unusual. And I think, you know, I mean, because of that fact alone, that it's an unusual thing, you know, you uh, explorers of the dark, uh, you know, uh, uh, archaeological bowels of, of the, the <laughs> cinema of the weird, uh, you know, it's like you got to see Tourist Trap. I think you got to check it out. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's it's just weird and creepy. It's just weird, but it's also creepy. I mean, like those dolls are legitimately disturbing. You know, when their mouths are dropping open and they're, oh, you know, and so there's it's like they're screaming, but they can't. Like, like, really yeah, yeah, yeah. It's creepy. Lots of disturbing imagery. Yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. A lot. Yeah, so I would recommend Very it. Very nightmarish. Right. Yeah, I guess that would uh, that mean that means tourist trap is freak show approved. Yo. Yeah. Right. Sure is. I did not know that going into this, to be honest. <laughs> that is a surprise. All right. Well, uh, this has been an interesting experiment. We'll try and tweak the technological end of this for next week. But next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by. Sean, I hope you're picking something that we can all have access to. <laughs> <laughs> or you shipping uh, shipping copies out. Oh yeah. man, I did not check that now you threw them off. Decide what we're gonna watch. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> we can find it. Um, everything can be found. Uh, yeah, everything can be found. Uh, next week we are going to be watching uh, 1997's The Relic. Oh boy! Shut up! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All I know is what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, the Tom Sizemore <laughs> movie. Yeah, The Relic. <laughs> Shot in the Chicago <laughs> Museum of Natural yes, History. Yes, the Field Museum. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. I'm so happy. So, I'm so happy. <laughs> the Relic. All right. Well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement basements are going dark. <laughs>